In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Well, today is Gaudete Sunday, also known as Pink Candle Sunday, the third Sunday of Advent. Pink being the color of joy. And this comes from the fact that in Latin, our intro begins with Gaudete, or translated into English, rejoice. Rejoice in what? Rejoice in the Lord. Indeed, how can we not? Christ has died for us and brought us peace with God. Our gospel text today in Matthew chapter 11 records two sermons of Jesus. The first sermon Jesus gave to the disciples of John the Baptist when they came to ask Jesus about his identity. And then the second sermon Jesus gave to the crowds after John's disciples left. And his second sermon was concerning John the Baptist. And I want to focus on this second sermon that Jesus gave to the Jewish crowds. In this text, John, or Jesus commended John and praised him, and he pointed out three ways that Jews were failing in respect to John. And this was serious business, very serious. Because if you fail to accept John and his message, you failed to accept the promised Messiah and the holy gospel of the forgiveness of sins in Jesus Christ. And so in this text today, Jesus is admonishing us to value the holy gospel and accept it when we hear it preached and not let ourselves fail by falling for a false gospel peddled by a false preacher, which is what so many of the Jews had done to their own destruction. Let me read again this second sermon of Jesus to the crowds. It begins with verse 7 of our gospel text. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds concerning John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? A man dressed in soft clothing? Behold, those who wear soft clothing are in king's houses. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before your face who will prepare your way before you. Thus our sermon text. Here Jesus presented three ways in which the Jews had wrongly considered John and his message. They thought he was a reed shaken by the wind. They thought of him as a man dressed in soft clothing and as a simple prophet. Let's unpack these things and let's pay attention carefully. These are words of warning to us today. The world to this day fails in the same way as the Jews of our text. Let's not repeat their error. Now, let me say up front, not all Jews rejected John and not all Jews rejected Jesus whom John preached. Some did to their salvation, but most did not. Now, first, when the Jews expected John to be a reed shaken by the wind, they expected him to be like themselves, someone who valued life, who valued reputation, advantage, and the approval of others. But what did John do when powerful rock star Jews came from Jerusalem to hear John? What did he do? Did he bend and shake in the wind and preach what they wanted to hear so as to cozy up to them? This is what he preached to them. You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit in keeping with repentance. So John did not bend. He did not shake in the wind. He did not care what powerful people thought of him. He didn't preach to soothe itching ears, and he didn't change his message for anyone. It was the same for everybody. And it was this, repent. Amend your sinful ways and believe in the Christ who is in your midst. And I'm sure this was a shock to the Pharisees and Sadducees who came from Jerusalem to hear John. He was so unlike them. Because this is how the whole world works, isn't it? 
One of the world's great currencies is the love of self and the approval of others. The Pharisees and Sadducees dealt in this currency to the nth degree. They loved the best seats at feasts. They loved the approval and adulation of the people and so were very jealous of Jesus when the crowd started to follow him and not them. But it's not just the ancient Jews who dealt in this currency. We all do it. We all tend to do what puts us ahead of others and brings us praise, whether it is wrong or not. And we all tend not to do that which brings us censure and scorn, whether it is wrong or not. God have mercy on us. The greatest tragedy in this respect is when preachers do this. Preachers who, unlike John, bend and shake in the wind and end up leading their listeners into hell. How many preachers have failed to preach the full counsel of God and because they feared the disapproval of others, <clears throat> gave people what they wanted to hear rather than what God wanted them to hear? Law and gospel. Such failed preachers would be too many to count. It is not enough for a preacher to simply preach Jesus saves you to thieves. He has to preach, repent, and stop your stealing. It is not enough to preach Jesus died on the cross for you to greedy people. They have to hear, repent, and learn to be generous. It is not enough for preachers to preach Jesus loves you to adulterers. They have to hear, repent of your sexual sins and learn to be chaste. Even Missouri Synod preachers have failed in this regard. And it is hard for us preachers to preach these things, no doubt, but we must if we are going to be faithful. And so hear me. Hear me tell you, repent. Repent of the sins that I just mentioned. Leave them behind. Untangle yourselves from them. They will shipwreck your faith. Please. A true John the Baptist-like preacher is one who does not shake in the wind and is willing to give up life and reputation and the approval of others to preach law and gospel, repentance, and the forgiveness of sins in Christ. John did not shake in the wind, contrary to the expectations of the Pharisees and Sadducees. He was solid, like a wall. He preached law and gospel to everyone, no matter the cost. Without fear, he even preached repentance to Herod. And what did it cost him? A prison sentence and then execution. And so friends, hear me plead with you today. Pray for your pastor, for me, and for all pastors that we would have the spirit of John the Baptist and be solid like a wall that we wouldn't shake in the wind and that we'd preach fire repentance to you and everybody and salvation in Jesus Christ who has won for us peace with God. The second way that the Jews misunderstood John the Baptist was they expected him to be a man in soft clothing as kings and princes in their palaces. In other words, they expected John to be like themselves and enjoy earthly riches and earthly comforts, nice clothes, nice car, nice house, pretty wife, well-aged wine in the wine cellar, fridge stocked with prime cuts of beef. Because doesn't everybody who has the money and can enjoy these, these things do so? And the answer is no. That's the way the world thinks, though. And that's the way the Jews expected John the Baptist to live. That's my guess. And mark my words, John was extremely popular. He could easily have used the generosity of people and donations to live a comfortable life, but he did not. Instead of living in a nice house fit for a king, he lived in the wilderness. Instead of wearing nice soft clothing, he wore a scratchy camel skin tunic 
Instead of eating fine foods, he ate locusts and wild honey. Was this guy from the moon? No. He was a pious, godly preacher who was willing to dispense with earthly and fleshly comforts for the sake of the gospel. And so should you be willing to dispense with all earthly riches for the sake of Christ and the gospel. But it is especially important for preachers to be John the Baptist-like and be willing to forgo self-gratification for the sake of the gospel. And the sad fact is that many pastors have failed by loving earthly and fleshly comforts. And inevitably, such pastors end up preaching a false gospel. How can a pastor preach self-control and admonish people to subdue the desires of the flesh when he indulges his own flesh? Again, pray for your pastor. Pray for all pastors. That we would be faithful. That we would sustain ourselves in truly holy living. Preachers need to be willing to preach like John at whatever the cost, at the risk of life and limbs, salary and benefits, comfortable home, comfortable bed. Now don't get me wrong. <laughs> this does not mean you can shortchange your pastor and make him a pauper. The Bible teaches us that those who proclaim the gospel should get their living by the gospel. And those pastors and church leaders who work hard and do well are worthy of double honor because a worker deserves his wages. God also commands Christians who receive instruction in the word to share all good things with his instructor or preacher because, after all, a man reaps what he sows. So a good and faithful preacher ought to be compensated and so provide for his family. At the same time, the faithful preacher must hold all earthly possessions and comforts of this earth at arm's length and be willing to dispense with it all for the sake of the gospel like John the Baptist. The third way that the Jews misunderstood John was they expected to see a simple prophet who foretold future events. Now, Jesus did not deny that John was truly a prophet. That is, he was someone whose preaching ought to have been listened to and obeyed. He was preaching the truth, the pure word of God. But Jesus said that John was more than a prophet. That is, he was more than someone like Isaiah or Jeremiah who prophesied of future events. For one thing, John was the fulfillment of a very specific prophecy. He was the one Malachi prophesied who would be a messenger preparing the way for the Messiah, the Christ. But secondly, John was unlike these Old Testament prophets in that he spoke of the Messiah and Christ as someone present who was right in front of him and right in front of everybody. John pointed with his finger at Jesus, the promised Messiah, and said, here he is, he's right here. Believe in him. He is the one who takes away the sins of the world. And mark my words, this present reality kind of Christ is offensive to people because it means they can't escape. And they're forced to deal with Jesus and they can't hide behind some excuse like, well, he's not here, so uh, I guess I don't have to deal with him. Not only that, the Pharisees and Sadducees could not cope with the fact that the promised Messiah in their midst did not come with earthly pomp and glory. Rather, Jesus came humbly, born of the Virgin Mary in Bethlehem in a stable, he grew up to be a carpenter and later a preacher and a healer and he rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, a beast of burden, to die on the cross as we heard just a couple weeks ago. And the Pharisees back then and the world to this day want a preacher who preaches a Christ who hasn't come yet so they don't have to deal with him. And should the Christ 
come, they want him to come with earthly splendor and glory. But this is the wrong Christ. The world's Christ cannot save you. The real Christ has come humbly to die on the cross. And God's message through John and all faithful preachers is repent and believe in this Christ. He is the Savior of the world. Believe in him now. Now, Jesus is coming again in glory and splendor, as we just confessed in the creed. But it's not going to be an earthly splendor and glory. Rather, it will be divine, something far more grand, and it will be an absolute terror to the unbeliever. Indeed, those who have rejected the humble Christ will not be pleased with the glorified Christ when he returns. And so the Pharisees and Jews rejected John because he was not a traditional prophet who prophesied of some future Christ. And he spoke of a Christ who was a present reality and who was humble. And I believe this is why many people find traditional Lutheran worship offensive. Because we believe, as the Bible teaches, because Jesus said, this is my body, that he is really and truly present in the bread and wine of Holy Communion. And this is offensive on two counts. First, Jesus is a present reality, and it means people have to deal with him. Second, it is also humble-like, and without earthly glory and splendor. Jesus in bread and wine? But he is there, humbly, for you and for me, for the forgiveness of sins. Allow me to sum up. Friends, John was a divisive preacher. So was Christ and so is the faithful preacher today. It's unavoidable. You have to choose and decide when you hear John, when you hear Christ, when you hear the faithful preacher. Am I going to listen and follow suit and change my sinful ways? Or am I going to go along with the world? The true preacher in the same vein as John and Christ is solid and does not shake in the wind and change to fit in. They are willing to forego earthly comforts and so be effective in preaching to people the heavenly comforts in the gospel. And so let's learn from our text, Matthew 11, to not be offended by John or by the humble Christ or by the faithful preacher. Rather, let's listen to them leave behind our sins and find salvation and grace in Christ alone. Amen. The peace of God that transcends all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.